Hey there, YouTubers. It's Don from True Cable coming at you again. Uh, this time, we're going to be talking about terminating shielded 8P8C plugs, or aka RJ45s, onto really thick shielded Ethernet cable. In this case, we're going to be terminating Category 6A shielded direct burial Ethernet. Difficulty-wise, this is probably the top difficult one to terminate in our entire line of cable. Uh, it's also very similar in, in regards to how you terminate CAT6 shielded direct burial. And in fact, uh, this video pretty well applies to any of our Category 6 or 6A shielded cable, direct burial or not. It's just that we're going to get into a little bit more of it today. Some of the tools you're going to need. Uh, obviously, RJ45 plugs. Now, we sell these on our website. These are designed specifically to fit our cables, and we have tested them. You're going to need flush cutters for sure. Uh, some way to cut your cable. Uh, our cut and strip tool is a great way of handling that. And also, our all-in-one crimp and termination tool, which has an excellent cable stripper on it, and I recommend it strongly when you're stripping our cable jackets, as long as the cable jacket is 6 millimeter or bigger. It's a pass-through crimper and it's exactly what you need for this particular plug. But one of the most critical tools, uh, believe it or not, is our external ground crimper. Now, this is important because it closes parallel onto the uh, ground tail on our plug. And without a proper crimp on this tail, you're gonna have probably either an unreliable or just straight up bad termination. RJ45 plugs in general, generally speaking, are something that you may have to use. I recommend that if you're going to be using one, you use it at only one end of the cable. The other end of the cable should be a shielded toolless keystone jack, category 6A or 6, depending on what cable you're using. Uh, the reason being that RG45 plugs tend to be a bit finicky, and they don't do anything for cable performance. It's just plastic with eight golden contacts. The uh, keystone jacks have impedance matching and they help a lot with transmission. So never attempt to create, especially with this thick shielded stuff, your own like quote unquote patch cable. In other words, putting an RJ45 onto both ends, that is an exceedingly bad idea. So you want to always have a keystone on one end and if you must, an RJ45 uh, like this, but only at the vice end. And one last item is our copper fabric strips. This is going to make termination of the plug and managing the bonding and grounding part of this a lot simpler. So stick around. I'm going to be right back, and we're going to get right into a lighted box situation, really close up and detailed, so you can see how this how this all goes. Be right back. One of the biggest differences between uh, a, a so-called regular RJ45 plug and one of these shielded external ground plugs is the presence of what's known as a strain latch. And that's that triangular piece of plastic that is found at the bottom of the plug right here opposite of the latch. And what happens is when the plug is terminated, that triangular piece of plastic is pushed down and will then divot into the cable jacket to hold the plug on. You don't want just the golden contacts to be holding it because otherwise you'll have a very unreliable termination. Now, in the case of our shielded external ground RJ45, um, the construction is largely similar except there is a cutout here for where the strain latch normally would be, but there is no actual strain latch. It's just simply a blank cutout. So what exactly is holding this plug onto the cable? Well, the answer is it's this external ground tab right here. If that's not properly attached to the cable, you're gonna be putting undue pressure on the golden contacts and that's gonna cause you an unreliable termination. So the first step, put about an yeah, inch and a half to two inches through there, close the tool all the way, make one turn around, like so, open up the handle all the way and carefully remove the cable. Once you've got a nice score on this cable jacket, it's a simple matter of breaking it at the score. And it should separate just like that. And there we go. And usually it's only two that you need to do. Pull that jacket off. And you're going to want to keep this jacket because we're going to use it to untwist conductor pairs. The next step 
is to grab your handy flush cutters, which are just about required. And you're going to want to remove this rip cord, which we didn't make use of. And that can simply be flush cut at the jacket and discarded. Now the cable shield, you want to go ahead and remove that too. So make a very small nip at the very edge of the jacket and then simply peel it off. Just like that. And you can discard that as well. The next step is you've got an ESD drain wire. Keep that drain wire. What you want to do is you want to wrap it backwards along the cable jacket like so. And the next step after that is you are going to use what's known as a copper fabric strip. This is a copper infused fabric with a conductive adhesive. And you want to skip about an eighth of an inch from the end of the cable jacket and pull tight and just wrap it around. And there we go. The next step is you've got this waterproof tape. Start cutting at the very edge of the jacket all the way around. It's important that you get as much off as possible. The more of this waterproof tape you leave on, the more difficult your termination is going to be. All right, so the next step is to remove this dielectric polyester tape. So we'll just make a simple nip and then you can rip that off at your leisure. You don't have to be super careful with it, it's really thin. And then the next is to go ahead and separate these conductor pairs into a star pattern. The spline has four wings and you want to, at a downward angle, cut each wing as close to the cable jacket as, reasonable, as, as reasonably possible without accidentally nicking a conductor in the process. So make four snips and then simply twist the spline and it comes right off. The next step is you want to untwist your conductor pairs. So we've got four pairs with eight wires, so we're just going to go ahead and untwist down to the jacket on all four pairs. All right, so we've got all of these conductor pairs untwisted. If you've got a lot of these that you're doing, you may want to put on a glove and then use like a smooth screwdriver shaft like so, and that'll make getting these uh, straightened out a lot simpler. I start at the cable jacket end and work your way up like so. Don't use an excessive amount of force because you might take the insulation right off the conductor. Uh, the other thing is make just maybe two passes, no more than three, because during this process of straightening out the conductors, you're actually also stretching the copper inside a little bit. That can cause you transmission issues. So be careful how many times and how much pressure you're using on these conductors. All right, so we've got all the conductors straightened out. The next step is to be able to, is to put these into order. We're gonna use the T568B sequence. So in this case, it's gonna be white, orange, orange. White, green, blue, white, blue, green, which will cross over, white, brown, brown. And then try to get it so that you're looking at the uh, white, orange conductor top down. That's going to help you figure out how the plug is going to go on, and it's going to help with me memorizing the colors. And so now that you got them in order, you want to kind of work on this uh, stripe here to get them as straight as you can with the, your fingers the rest of the way. You want to get it so that you've got a spot that is looking pretty darn lined up, like this one right here. And then that's where you're going to flush cut. Take your flush cutters and flush cut across. You can either do it straight across or on an angle. Now it's time to prep up the plug. Now, what I mean by prepping up the plug is hinge this down slightly past 90 degrees, like so. And that's going to make it easier to get these conductors in there. So working from the bottom of the plug with white orange at the top, you're going to want to insert this way. Keep in mind, there's a plastic ledge in there that's going to possibly hang you up. 
And we're going to push it on and see if the order is correct. So it is staggering the conductor, so you're going to have to be careful about how you're looking at this. So you got white, orange, orange. Then you should have white, green, blue, white, blue, green, white, brown, brown. You may have to turn it over to look at it again to confirm because sometimes the color stripes on the other side. Now you've got a cable jacket that is going to fight you a bit trying to get it into the plug because the cable is larger, more circular, I should say, uh, than the plug. The plug is rectangular, the cable is round. So what you're going to want to do is kind of ease it in there. Don't, uh, don't hang up your uh, cable jacket on the edge of that uh, metal and just push it in. And you want to stop that black cable jacket right at the point where this metal stops. And that'll give you the proper half inch untwist from the end here to the golden contacts. Now you may be tempted to put this into your crimper uh, at the moment. Do not do that. Instead, what you're going to do is you're going to hinge this ground tab back up like so. It's easier if you put it on a flat surface. And then the next easy way to do this is to start these wings down first. Now, we want to crimp this ground collar tail first before it goes into the crimp tool. So the non-wing side, this flat side, or I should say circular side here, goes into this cavity and the wings are gonna go up here. And you're gonna use the large cavity. So we're gonna put that in there and you want to offset it maybe a sixteenth of an inch from the end of the tool to the start of the plug housing. And then simply press down all the way. And now we've got a perfectly crimped ground collar. All right, so the next step is to put your actual plug and, and wires here into your crimp, and, your crimp and termination tool. So unlock it and the uh, clip side is going to go up like so and be careful because it's easy to run those conductors into the flush cut blade so you're going to have to maybe ramp them up just a little bit at a mild angle not too much just at a mild angle and so you can clear that uh, flush cut blade there we go they came right through now go ahead and put it in there so it's fully seated just use really light pressure start to close the handle like this and then close the tool all the way just like that all right, so the way you check your termination is you make sure all the golden contacts are down and you make sure that they're fully flush cut at the front. And they are indeed fully flush cut at the front and all of the golden contacts are indeed down. So there you go. You now have a crimped and ready to go shielded RJ45 end on your cable. If you have any questions, please leave in the comments below. Uh, give us a like or a dislike, subscribe to our channel. And with that, I'm going to say you have a great day and happy networking.